Hello kite foilers and welcome back at the Kite Finder Kite School. Well, we've been talking a lot about all the technical uh, technical stuff about kite foiling. If it goes a little bit too much for you, just go to the last video cuz now we're going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, hello kite foilers. You choose to to, to take the red pill. Well, we are here with Rolf van der Vlucht to show us how deep the rabbit hole goes. All right. Well, maybe it's good to rehearse a little bit uh, topics that we've been uh, covering. We just looked at the difference between a, a normal kite border and a hydrofoil kite border. We explained a little bit how this wing stuff works. Yeah, you got a bit. You got a small wing and a big wing. There's there's lift. There's drag. You got uh, different types of wings and uh, we talked a little bit about uh, stability why do you need this uh, back wing yeah why well, we need a stabilizer a stabilizer indeed and yeah now we're gonna kind of look into how this all fits together how uh yeah how does this whole package work okay and how does it work when you're riding it exactly what's uh yeah what does it uh, what does it do when you're riding it well just show us rolf right um so basically we've shown there's lift and drag on this fr on this main wing. I draw it here from a top view and from a side view. Mm -hmm. So to in an attempt to keep it simple, I remove this fuselage thing and this uh, mast? this yeah. mast uh, unit. And basically what's left is just this main wing and the stabilizer. The main wing, like I explained, gives you some amount of lift. Yep. It's drying up. And some amount of drag. The stabilizer, in general, it gives you a little bit of downforce. It's not necessary, but this is this is kind of how it works. Okay, so the front is pushing you up and then the back one is uh, pulling you down a it's bit. It's keeping you down, yeah. And also, you don't get this without a little bit of drag penalty. So call this, uh, this drag and this is also lift eh? because it's in the other direction but uh, it's just lift oh, it's like it's like a front but then an upside down one it's basically lift in a, yeah in a direction that you actually don't want but you need it to be stable um, because of these two forces you are able to stand on this and now the question is yeah but where do you need to stand yeah and maybe it's good to start from the back what will happen if you would be standing here? So you basically put your your foot all the way in the back, and you lean on that foot. Oh, then you, so you put you put all your body weight on the on the back wing. Yeah, yeah. Then you're putting pressure here, but you see there's already a little force that's that's pulling down. So what's going to happen? The nose is going to go up, and you're going to be flying out of the water. What happens if you move a little bit forward? then you're going to keep the nose down and if you move too uh, too far forward basically let's say over here then you might even be standing so much on your front foot to push the nose back down into the water and oh, so uh, you're diving and, and yeah and, and dive back into the water so both of these extremes are basically not where you want to be somewhere in the middle is where you want to be and uh, in aerodynamics people start to call this the center of pressure so basically this is the point where the combination of forces from the bow from the two wings is kind of Ideal. kind of centered in, in in one point it's again yeah just simplifying the the whole story and normally you can draw it depends on the design etc etc I just draw it here just in front of the main wing. Oh, so your uh, center of gravity has to be just in front of the main wing. Exactly, that's basically what it means. If you want to ride on this hydrofoil, in this example, you have to make sure that your weight, that your the force that you put on the foil, is right over this spot. If you put it too far back, you're going to lift the foil out of the water. If you put it too far forward, you're going to dive into the water. So this is the whole balancing game it also goes of, of course to the 
to the sides so yeah. if you put your force here it's gonna roll over on the other way other side it's gonna roll over in the other direction so yeah I always like to say when you look at uh, kite surfing on a twin tip you can exp uh, you can compare it to standing on a, on a tree log yeah. basically this is standing on a bowl you're uh, you have to keep your balance in all uh, directions okay well in with a twin tip it's yeah, it doesn't hurt to stand on your front foot or on your back of course until the point where you really dive into the water but it's it's different in that way so yeah this center of pressure point i also draw it here Whoop. Yeah, it's a bit small but this this uh cp center of pressure this is this is very important this is what you also need to feel if you are trying to learn to uh to ride a hydrofoil when you can uh yeah picture it feel where this where this force is coming from then you will understand that you uh that that is what you're what you're balancing on okay. well people next time we're gonna talk about uh, what uh, is the technique doing for your riding so subscribe over here and rolf will tell you all about it